Hi everyone, my name is Sally Lewis and I'm a Ruby Ambassador with Plexus Worldwide. I wanted to talk to you today about coaching, um, specifically how to lead a coaching call, um, what that looks like as far as me and my team, what we're just now starting to do, and um, to have this be a duplicatable process and to kind of give you an empowerment of this is easy, this is something that we all need to be doing um, to help each other grow in our Plexus business or any network marketing business. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about, first, um, coaching versus training. Um, Helen McFadden did an amazing um, presentation on this for our Ruby and Senior Ruby Ambassadors at convention this last summer. And I learned so much from her, and I am ready now to put that into practice. And so um, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about what I learned there and um, what we're doing as a team um, starting this month. So what is the difference between training and coaching? Training, um, so trainers tell, coaches ask. Um, we want to listen as a coach, whereas a trainer wants to talk. Think of trainer and teacher almost as synonymous. And what does a teacher have all around them? Students. But what does a coach have around him or her? A team, right? So we don't want to create a room full of students listening to us and just learning how what we the information we have found and we know we want to create a team and what Helen McFadden said um, is she wanted to create a volunteer army behind her um, that's excited and learning on their own and empowered think of the difference in that if you have built even if you're senior gold gold you've got a pretty good team underneath you but if they're all students if they're all waiting on you to tell them what to do um, if they are all, you know, just thinking they don't know anything and can't find out anything until they hear it from your, from your mouth first, um, then your team may grow, but they will grow very slowly and you will be working tirelessly and feeling like the weight is all on your shoulders. Why doesn't anyone want to do this with me? Why am I having to do everything for someone else? Whereas if we're coaching and we can practice the habits of a good coach um, and coaching our teammates, We've got a team that's excited to rally around our common goals and our individual goals, ready to tackle um, what we've got ahead of us. Um, the analogies could keep flowing. I'll stop it at that. But do you feel the difference? Do you want a team underneath you? Do you want a volunteer army underneath you? Or do you want a classroom full of students? I don't want students. I want excited teammates. I want a volunteer army that's going to tackle this amazing goal that we have in front of us and take advantage of this incredible opportunity that we have. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. How do we do that? How do we pull that out in people um, when we, we want to focus on training um, as an upline? When you've got a team underneath you, you want to um, give them the tools that they need. Um, but the way we go about that is going to bring about um, how they handle that information and how they view their own personal business. Okay. Um, so like we said, coaches ask, trainers tell. So what does that mean? It means we want to help our people learn and discover things on their own rather than teaching them what we discovered on our own. Now you may have had a rock star upline that handheld you every step of the way. Um, I had a great upline. She is a great coach though. Um, and so I did a lot of this learning and you know, I'm not a very dependent person in some areas of my life. Some areas I am. Um, but in this business, you know, I really kind of tackle things by myself. I learn things by myself. So what my downfall has been so far in my business is that I wasn't a great trainer and teacher because I learned things by myself. You know, I went and sought things and I went and asked questions or I watched the videos and learned how to do something or I searched my back office and just figured it out. Um, so I was expecting that people were doing the same thing or thinking they should be. Um, so I wasn't training but I also wasn't coaching people to encourage that self-learning. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm starting to do now. And um, we've kind of got a little system in place. We really just started um, this last week. So I just want to share with you what we're doing to kind of duplicate that self-excitement, that self-learning, and truthfully, without setting goals for ourselves and wanting to do the work ourselves, this becomes another normal job, which we know it's not. This job is fun, it's exciting, and the reward is incredible, and it's worth every moment that you can spend putting it in there. 
Um, so we want to help our people learn and discover things on their own rather than teaching them what we discovered on our own. Um, so don't provide answers. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what a coaching call looks like, but the point of this would be ask questions. Don't just sit there and talk the whole time, which is a big, <laughs> big learning curve for me because you get me on the phone and I just kind of blah. Um, I have the um, curse of word vomit sometimes. And so for me, it's to stop and listen. Ask questions. Ask open-ended questions, but we want to listen um, um, through the silence. So Sorry. Hold on, darling. I'll be right there, okay? Work from home mom. Hold on one second. <laughs> Sorry. How professional. Um what network marketing is all about though, right? Okay, so don't provide answers. We want to empower through questions. Um, if, if my downline is, if me, if my journey is an indication of my downline or your downline, um, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Most of my downline knows the basic bones of what they need to be doing every day. Um, they know they should be doing it every day. So by me saying, okay, this is what you need to be doing every day, okay, um, do this, do this, do this, do this, or, you know, check in on this IPA thread. Those things are great, and they need to have that basic information. Um, but like I said, my my pitfall as a as someone's downline, as Abby's downline, when she's coaching me, she doesn't need to keep telling me what I need to be doing. I know what I need to be doing. I'm not doing it, you know, like, or if that's the problem, you know, my downline, if they know what they need to be doing, but they're not seeing the results, it's because they're not doing what they know they need to be doing. Um, so to empower through questions, rather than telling them what you've been telling them, rather than, again, repeating what's on the team page and what they can find in the files section on your team page, empower them through questions. Make that person, you know, come to the realization, yes, I know what I need to be doing. I'm not doing it. This is what I need to do. I know I need to do this. I just haven't done it yet. Um, so that is what we want to get out of a coaching call. Um, and you know what? You may come across a few of the people on your team that they're doing everything. I had one of those this week, and I was like, I'm sorry that this coaching call has been kind of all over the place, but you're doing really well. Like you're, um, you're doing all of the things, and the growth will come if you continue to do this. So empowering, then at that point, keep doing what you're doing and still um, – empowering them through that. Um, but one thing Helen said, she was like, you need to be okay as a coach with awkward silence. Don't provide the answer no matter how long it takes for that person to finally pipe in. Um, she says sometimes she'll sit on the phone and three minutes will pass and she's asked a question and that person is just like, I don't know. And she's like, well, you know, just think about it for a minute. And she's not going to help them, you know, provide that answer to them because it's so important to um, produce that self-learning. We, we use so many times as an excuse as the one being coached, you know, well, I just didn't know how to do that or someone wasn't helping me or um, maybe you don't have an upline that's very helpful. Um, we can't use those things as excuses because we have everything we need right in front of us. Maybe it's not on your uplines team page, but it's on their uplines team page that you're added to. Or maybe you just need to do a YouTube search every day. <laughs> There's so much out there. Um, so again, as the coach, don't provide answers. Make them come come up with um, whatever you're asking them on their own and be okay with a little silence. It's going to empower them that they do know what they need to do. They do know um, how to you know reach out to people and they do know that they're supposed to be doing it every day. Um, so again, don't provide answers, empower through questions, and be okay with silence. And we want to try and listen about 80% of the time and talk about 20% of the time. Again, something that I am having to make sure and work on. And now, um, as far as us, we're just getting started. So our my first coaching call does look a little bit different than probably what will happen in our following coaching calls with those same people. Um, and we'll talk about what my first ones have looked like in just a second. Um, but so the purpose of our coaching calls, we want to connect with our downline. We want to connect with our teammate. Um, we want to ask them questions. We want to empower them. And we want to ultimately help them unlock their full potential. 
Um, how many of you have signed someone and been like, gosh, they're going to be so amazing at this business or I can't wait to do this with them. They're, you know, this is my best friend and we're going to do this. We're going to have so much fun. Um, but the problem ends up being you can't want it for someone else. You can vision cast, but you can't put a fire for that vision in someone's heart or under their butt, whichever, <laughs> whichever needs to happen at that moment. Um, they're going to have to come up with that on their own. They're going to have to muster up that excitement and courage based on how you can vision cast and how you can empower them and ask the right questions um, to get them started thinking, okay, this is something I can do. This is something I want to do. And these are some steps to carry it out. Um, so something that Helen gave us was a little kind of roadmap of how and what you want to be covering in a coaching call. And her coaching calls, she says, you know, she has a lot of teammates and she does probably her, I think she said her level ones. And then if she has some, you know, level twos that don't have an active level one, you know, that kind of a thing. Someone who she's immediately responsible for their journey. And then she's duplicating that and asking those people to have coaching calls and coach their teammates. Um, so that's why we want to kind of have a duplicatable process. It's not a difficult thing where you're training for 30 minutes or doing an ambassador training. It's a coaching call where you're asking more questions and listening and helping them learn. Um, so her analogy or her, um, now I lost that word, grow, G-R-O-W. Um, G, what is your goal? So we want to find out in the call, what is your goal? Um, is it to go silver by the end of the month? Is it to be senior gold by the end of the year? Do you want to be emerald by Hawaii next year? What is your big goal? Um, and then, as I'll show you, what we have done is break that goal down into small steps. Um, everyone loves to look at the big picture. Um, some of you may not believe you'll ever get to your big picture, and that's part of the problem. You don't really, you would love to be in Hawaii next year, but you're like, yeah, but I probably won't be. So I'll just, as long as I can get $600 a month by then, I'll be great. <laughs> Y'all, that's a huge difference going emerald and just, you know, wanting to cover your car payment. Um, the great thing about it is they're both extremely attainable. But the way our minds work, we want people to see the amazingness of the big picture, the big goal, but we want to give them small steps that are attainable and then help them understand how they can get there. So what is your goal? R is what is the reality of this happening now? With what you're doing in your business, what's the reality of you going senior gold? You added one person last month or you didn't add anybody last month. What's the reality of you adding 50 people in the next three months if you're not doing any of the work now. So we want to address that. Now, is what you're doing now going to help you meet that goal? Question? Silence. Um, and then, oh, what options do you have? Okay, based on where we are, what are the options? So we can have, I love my friend Lauren, she calls it a BHAG, and I think someone um, maybe... Melissa Eichenhorst maybe came up with that. Big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, you can call it your, you know, your dream goal. And then you have a must-have goal. Um, so what's, what options do you have? Okay, we're going to shoot for senior gold by the end of the year. But at least we're going to work toward gold by November. Something like that. What are options? Um, and then what will you do this week to reach your goal? So that's the W, this week. What will you do this week to reach your goal? And that is setting out um, specific things you're going to be checking on at your next coaching call. So it gives them some easy step-by-step -step things, even if they're big things, um, that they know they have to have done in the next seven days. Keeps forward motion in their business, gets them excited, gives them little goals that they can reach. Until then, that's going to help them reach that big goal. Um, so if you will... Excuse me again for just one minute. Let me go get her out of her head. Sorry, it's hard to keep a two-year-old occupied. Um, okay, so what does that look like for what I've been doing this week? That looks like 
this beautiful little gold notebook that my upline Abby gave me has an amazing notepad inside. And this is what I've been using for my coaching calls. Um, so I'm not an extremely organized person, but I have forced myself to get organized um, of late. I have a whiteboard here um, where I have put um, my top 10 leaders and then another 10 people underneath that are um, maybe not working their business super seriously, but have the potential and want to work their business. Um, so I have their current rate, their goal, um, the points toward the next goal, and how many ambassadors they need this month to stay on track. And those are the things that I'm finding out in my first coaching call. Um, I also have written on there what time and day our coaching call is. So that has been very helpful. Um, but that helps me because I am a very visual learner. I'm a very visual person. So I have this syndrome called out of sight, out of mind. And it has really held me back in my coaching, in my following up with my teammates and um, keeping track with people. So I have stopped using that as an excuse and created a big board with everyone's name on it that I need to be checking in with so that I can be, oh yeah, I need to touch base with her. Anyway, so that has been helpful to me. I also started to make a notebook a long time ago and never filled it with anything. So I have these nice alphabetical tabs and I will tell you what I'm doing with that now that I'm doing coaching calls. So before the call, if I didn't fill one of these out at our initial welcome call or initial three-way call, I fill it out before I call them for my coaching call. Um, this is an ambassador information and follow-up sheet, and it's in the files on our team page. I'm sure um, if you're not on my team, there's something similar um, with your team. It's just an information sheet, so I have all the information on who I've signed up. Um, so I fill that out just so I know. Um, you has their initial why on here, and then it's got some um, follow-up lines that we can do. Um, you know, what, when our next coaching call and stuff like that is. So, um, how, I mean, I'm so organized, you guys. I just wrote down kind of a, an overview of what I wanted to cover in that first coaching call. So I, I would ask them, okay, how many team members do you have right now? How many of them are current? And then how many of them are interested in working the business, even if it's just to get their products paid for? Um, doesn't mean that they're, you know, dreaming about going diamond, but that they at least want to cover the cost of their products and they're willing to talk to someone. Um, you guys, like 90% of the diamonds right now, none of them joined <laughs> to work the business. So that does not mean anything. Um, so we want to kind of cover that. I want to know what we've got to work with. Yes, you are halfway to gold, but how many team members do you have that you can even really um, duplicate down this coaching method and help them go silver. How many points did they end up with last month? This is important because um, we want to know how many points that they need to have before they're going to make their next rank. How many people do they need to add then? So um, I want to find out how many points they had at the end of last month. And you can do that by going in your back office, the little qualification square in the bottom left on the front dashboard page. You can actually drop down and change the month to last month, and then you can see how many points um, they had there. So then I've been asking them, what is your goal? What is your goal maybe for the end of this year? So that gives us um, a kind of a four-month window of breaking down um, their goals to a little more step-by-step. -step. So what what is your goal rank and what is your goal? If, if it's someone who's really not um, well-versed in their business, they may not know. They may say, yeah, I want to go Emerald by the end of this year. Well, if you're silver... It can probably happen because Celeste Gwynn did it in four or five months, but um, let's talk about what do you really need financially? What is your goal right now? What would help your family financially um, that we can reach by the end of the year? Or if you have a goal, if you're, um, like I had one team member who her husband just went to school, she wants to cover her van payment as soon as possible. So what financially is going to help you? And then we can figure out what rank is associated with that and how many people they would need on their team based on that financial goal. Okay. So we want to figure out the points and break it down. There are some great videos on the math. I'm not going to teach you how to do that here because that's not what this call is about. But um, get with your upline or we can um, share some videos in the comments of this this video of how to kind of break down and goal set. Um, so we want to break down those points. How many points do you need on your team between what you had last month and your goal? So that's going to tell us how many people you need to add total to make that goal and then break it down monthly. So if they need to add 50 people by the end of the year, don't just divide it by four because that means they're going to have to 
go crazy personally recruiting now and then relying on their team less when it's a bigger team. So we want to incrementally kind of increase that to add up to the total that they need. So don't overwhelm them with like, you need to add 15 people personally recruiting this month um, and 15 people when you've already added 45. That doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Um, so break it down. Um, don't just separate it by four, but how many do you need to add this month? Then you've got a couple. Maybe you'll find someone who's working in business. You can help a couple more people go silver. And then next month, you're going to add this many more. So break that down. Um, and how did those, what do you need to do to make that happen? Um, so from, for instance, most of the people that I've coached with are silver and a little bit over silver. Um, and at least have probably one person, one or two people that are actively working their business. Um, so on my sheet, let me, it's going to be backwards so you can't read it anyway. Um, I would write down kind of what we talked about at the beginning, those questions that we were asking. How many um, team members do you have? What's going on right now? Who are you talking to? That kind of a thing. Um, how many points did she have last month? And then here we did our math for the goals. Um, and I kind of walked through that with them. Obviously, it wasn't FaceTime, so they couldn't see what I was doing, but just kind of walking through what I was doing. Um, and then a plan of action. If you need to add five people this month, there's two weeks left in the month or 10 days left in the month pretty much now. Um, wh who needs to add what? Well, as an ambassador, our goal should always be to go silver or go silver again every month. We want to be personally recruiting at least three people a month to keep a forward momentum in our business. Um, so with this, I would say you need to be adding at least two in the next two weeks. Um, your, your downlines need to add at least one, and then your level two needs to add one. Um, so help them and coach them to add at least one more person this month. So not only are you working on your personal recruiting, but then get on the phone with them and help them set their goals and then help them get in three-way chats or whatever you need to do to help them sign at least one person this month. And that's gonna get you your four or five people. That's gonna keep you on track to meet your goals. And we did the same thing um, with this person. I did gold um, and we did our senior gold numbers for this month and big, hairy, audacious goal. If she wants to go ruby by the end of the year, we would need to add 11 this month. And I kind of broke that down with some more level ones and twos that coach she could help add one. So I think that is really helpful because when you tell someone, yeah, well, you're going to have to add six people to your team this month. We know you hear the word team, but you think, oh, this is me adding these people by myself. I'm never going to be able to do that. And it is possible, but that's definitely not what we think at first, right? Um, so helping them break it down, look, look, you have people on your team that have either added people before, even if they're not working very hard right now, get back in touch with them, help them add a person, see who they've been talking to or who they could talk to to add one this month. So duplicating that coaching again and goal setting um, helps spread those numbers and that recruiting um, between your team and not just for yourself. Um, and then what I also loved about this little paper um, is it had a little to-do list, a little action plan on the right here. So some of the things we covered for a lot of our people um, were, you know, check on your posting, make your posting more personal, um, maybe start a team message thread is one that I um, have told a couple of people to do. So little things like that that they needed to have done by the time we spoke next, um, whether that was adding at least one person or have a coaching call with two people to help them, um, you know, like we just talked about reaching their goals. Um, we've got a challenge going on right now, so making sure they're checking in daily to that challenge and keeping up with that. So giving them a little to-do list um, to be able to check things off as well as that um, broken down goal for the month, um, I feel like is going to be very helpful for people and I've gotten some good feedback on that. So um, after um, I filled you know, their paper out, we've gotten off the phone, I put their ambassador information sheet and that first coaching call in the binder um, under their under their letter and that way next week before our call I can look over everything see what we talked about last time re-familiarize myself um, have that checklist so that we can go over that when we talk the next time and then honestly you guys like Helen says 
her coaching calls are 15 to 20 minutes max. And the reason she does that is because she wants them to happen and she wants them to happen on a consistent basis. But people don't always have 30 minutes to come and be on a call and listen to you blab. And that is something that, again, I'm going to have to work on. Um, we want to be honorable and cognizant in people's time and um, want it to be something that, again, is duplicatable. If we are talking to someone and they're coaching call for 45 minutes, they're going to be like, gosh, I don't have time. I'm working full time. I don't have time to talk to all of my, you know, business builders for 45 minutes, you know, once a week. Um, so we want it to be something that's very duplicatable, very easy. Um, but we want to ultimately be connecting with our team, empowering them and helping them unlock their own desires and their own potential to reach their own goals. And of course, all that's going to do is help, um, build this incredible mentality on your team of go-getters, of people that want this for themselves. Um, rather than students listening to you in a room, we want to create that excited volunteer army, that football team that's, you know, huddling before the game and just super excited um, and rallying together. And that is what my dream is for this and why I've started doing this with our team. And I want my level ones that I'm coaching, I want you to start duplicating this with your team. You need to be coaching them as well. And like we just talked about, it doesn't have to mean that you know everything, but it's asking questions, helping them learn um, so that you're not having to do all the teaching. You're just empowering them to go and search for answers themselves. Um, so 25 minutes, this probably could have been a lot shorter of a video, but again, like I said, I'm the queen of word vomit and I took care of my kid twice. So um, thank you guys for listening today. I really hope this was helpful. Um, again, coaching, you know, I think training is such a daunting task. Um, to someone, I am not teacher-minded at all. I wanted to be a teacher only so I could decorate my room and write on the whiteboard, um, not actually to teach children. Um, so for me, teaching and training seems very overwhelming because it, it puts all of this on my shoulders. Like if I don't give them the right information or if I'm not, if I change my mind and then want to do something different, then I've got to, you know, train them to do that. Um, and then it also makes me feel like, everything, whether it's growth or not growth, is my fault. Um, whereas I do carry the weight of that as a leader and the responsibility of the growth of my team. Um, but fault is a very guilt-ridden word. Um, and if we consider ourselves um, the sole provider of teaching and training for our teammates, then we are going to carry a lot of that guilt. Um, and it's going to really come on us hard when... Um, when our team's not performing well or when they're not in that mindset of wanting it for themselves. So another way to do great coaching, um, helping your team get involved on the team page. If you see a great, um, a great post that your up ones posted on the team page, tag your people in it, get them involved. Y'all, these team pages are invaluable for information and just building that sense of camaraderie and helping them want it for themselves, helping them see the big picture, helping them watch a diamond documentary that they never would have clicked on before had you not tagged their name under it. Um, so it's just building that belief in them and seeing that they can do this for themselves and that, oh yeah, I should look at this team page, you know, once a day at least. There's some cool stuff on here. Um, so get them involved in the team page. As a leader, tag your people in those posts. Even if you're tagging them every day, hey, I just want to make sure you're watching this stuff. This is really good. This really helped me. Um, start a group message thread. If you have two people under you, start a team thread, message thread. I didn't start my team page until I was gold. But I had two different message threads that I ran all the time. I ran a customer message thread and a wholesale ambassador just only message thread. And I ran kind of a working the business people message thread. And that was so I could have, you know, some sense of team mentality between my people, a good place for us to kind of get together and ask and answer questions to each other. And for me to share information that I was learning um, and say, hey, y'all, I saw this video today. It was awesome. You guys should watch it. Or product information. That's huge. We want to be training our customers on how to take our products and checking on their water. That's a great time saver as well um, to just, you know, pour into that thread. Um, so message threads, getting involved on the team page, and then these coaching calls. Creating that one-on-one -on -one accountability has been something that has been missing between me and my team, and that's why I wanted to make this video today um, talking about how we're making that change, and I hope to see a lot of wonderful things come from it. So those are just a few things that you can do to kind of coach your team and inspire them to get involved on their own accord. And I hope it's helpful, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Be blessed, and let's go after it, guys.